Imagine a school where boys can be boys. Heck, imagine a school where there is such a thing. I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, and this episode of Right Angles brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com. And gentlemen, not only is there a place where they know what a boy is, but there are some schools around the country, as I learned from reading the Wall Street Journal today, where they actually build the curriculum in concert with the way boys are. In fact, they are, Stephen Green, one could say, following the science when it comes to boys. I want to read this one quote here. It's from a 16-year-old kid who said, It's really hard sitting still for eight hours a day. When he jumped from elementary school to middle school, the lack of recess and daily gym was a jolt. He often got in trouble for talking out of turn or fidgeting at his desk. After school, he and his friends escaped into video games, a realm where they have purpose and work together on a shared goal. Now, Stephen Green, this is a, a rather lengthy article by a woman who is delightfully named Julie Jargon uh, in the Wall Street Journal, but I found it uh, thrilling to see that there are places where they recognize the inherent differences in boys and girls, and they decided to build a curriculum around the way boys behave and think. And there's much more activity built into this boys for uh, boys school. There's more uh, things where you work with your hands. There's more competition, even for simple things where they say like, okay, it's time to straighten up your notebook. I'm going to give you two minutes. And he said they found that when they give boys two minutes to straighten up their no notebook, they get it done in a minute and a half. If you just ask them to straighten their notebook, they never get it done. As you know, because you have two boys. Um, so I, uh, the other, yeah, they're both teenagers right now. Ugh. The other aspect of it is they find that when boys are not in the same gatherings with girls, not only is there um, little showing off for the girls, but there's also little embarrassment because the girls are watching. Um, Steve... I know that this is just a small microcosm, and in fact, you'll be stunned to hear that the school that they focus on first is actually in California. Uh, but uh, what do you think, as a father of two boys, of this notion that there might be a way to be more effective at teaching kids if you actually worked with their biology? Yeah, you know, I'll give you an example of that in just a sec, but I got a, a couple other things first. One is it's it's been so long since I watched uh, the original Train Spotting, probably not since the late 90s, that I can't remember the exact setup, but one of the guys in the little, you know, heroin addicted gang or whatever drugs they were on uh, ends up accidentally uh, making out with a with a tranny at a bar or whatever it was. And Ewan McGregor's character is explaining in the voiceover later that, you know, in a thousand years, there won't be there won't be boys and girls there won't be men and women we will just all be wankers. And <laughs> lo and behold, it ended up happening by about the year yeah. 2019. So he, he was only off by about 990 years or, or whatever it was. Um, that said, um, you know, it's it's difficult for me to to approach this with any sort of uh, sense of novelty or, or newsworthiness or anything like that, because from the time I was in seventh grade, I was going to all male schools. Uh, that's just that's just the way it was for me. Uh, the only girls around, we had the one teacher who was kind of hot. And and that was it. Almost all my teachers were uh, were men. In fact, I can think of uh, a Western Civ teacher and uh, an ESL teacher. And of course, I, I didn't take ESL. This is my first language, believe it or not, uh, who were women. And yeah, everybody else was a guy. Um, and so that's just the atmosphere I was raised around or, or taught in. And I'm I'm so used to it that I I I. Other than the fact that you know you're you're 15 years old and horny all the time, I I really didn't think about the fact that there weren't women around. Um, it was it was just my school environment. Um, honestly, my we probably need more of that if I if I had to guess, just based on what I've seen with my kids. But you you gave the example about you know get your notebook in shape in in two minutes. I must have spent a year banging heads with my uh, with my boys when they were really little because I wanted them to, to brush their teeth right before we left. It's, you know, it's the last thing you do. You have your sugary cereal, your pancakes with the syrup, whatever it was they were having for breakfast. You want to get that stuff off their teeth before they go to school. And it was like, okay, guys, we got five minutes. Let's brush your teeth. Let's get going. And now 
by the time they're actually brushing their teeth, even though I'm riding a herd over them, it, we're, we're almost late for school. So it finally dawned on me after a year ago, after a year of this, why am I fighting them like this? Why don't I just make them brush their teeth after breakfast before they can go to the bathroom? I'll bet they'll get it done in a hurry. <laughs> Boom. Problem solved. Never had to yell at them again about that yeah. at that time of day. Um, boys and girls are different. Uh, I, I, I've never been a girl. I've never dressed as a girl. I've never raised a girl. Um, so I don't know how that should play out, but, uh, let boys be boys or that's just boys being boys is really been used as, as derision for, for bad behavior. But I think a lot of what has been called bad behavior by women is not necessarily bad behavior. It is finding good outlets, good directions for boys' energy levels and boys' ways of behaving that aren't necessarily bad, but that are different. And maybe we need a little bit more of that. So, Bill Whittle, you'll be surprised to learn that this is going on elsewhere in the country, including in Dallas, Texas, right here in my own backyard. Um, they have uh, a longer track record than the school in California did. Um, and this is a an all-boys public school for grades 6 through 12, and they've been around since 2011. They've had enough time to establish some results. They have a 91% graduation rate, and the same percentage of students score proficient on reading compared with the school district average of 52%. So they have much... But that's more, right? 91 is bigger than 52, yes. Um, not only will you be surprised to hear these kind of results, you may also be surprised to hear that, that this school is actually named the Barack Obama Male Leadership Academy. <laughs> So this... Well, make up your mind. Uh, <laughs> but they have found um, that they said, look, it's it's not just about uh, academics. We're actually invested in the lives and the social well-being of these kids. And they build the schedule because they know that brain science for boys, that they need uh, the constant movement. And so when they're doing an activity, they'll shift the activity every 15 minutes or so to keep them focused and on task so that they can keep moving, so that they have a way to engage kinesthetically with the lessons. Um, is this something you think can even multiply? I mean, it exists clearly, but it doesn't exist on a broad scale. Could it possibly multiply in a day when we can't even come to a public agreement about what a boy or a girl is? Well, I don't think there's any coincidence between the fact that the, the the more problems we have discussing whether you're a boy or a girl, uh, the lower the test scores fall in terms of education all over the place. I'm not able to give an impartial verdict on this uh, in the same way Steve is, and I was I, I was one of those lab rats. So not only do I not have an impartial uh, opinion on this, I have an inside opinion on this. Uh, the great single benefit of my life, the single greatest thing that happened to me was I went to British schools for eight years starting at age four and about age 11 or 12 or something like that. Um, and and the British school system at the time was was so spectacularly successful. Uh, yeah, American school system was largely based on it. But let me just tell you what what our what our uh, elementary, junior high, and and eventually high school looked like. Uh, we it was all boys, no girls. Just that alone is an enormous uh, difference because girls are just really distracting and the, and 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 the and the amount of clowning and tomfoolery that goes along with it not to mention the amount of heartbreak and all of the and all of the envy and all of the jealousy and the pining away and the crushes and all that stuff it's just not there uh, so so a lot of that was gone we all had to wear uniforms they had to be the same uniform so there was none of this kind of um, my clothes are better than your clothes. Back in yeah. Miami, we used to say you shopped at Zayers, you know, and 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 all these kids now are just you know two hundred, four hundred dollars sneakers and all the rest of it. That was gone. Everybody had to wear the same, the same outfits. But the main thing about that about that type of school system was was that the discipline and the respect were built into the system. Discipline meaning that even in Bermuda, you had to go to school and you wore a school tie, you know, and, and, and you wore a school blazer with a school patch. You had a little enamel pin for your house. The, those of you who don't know what this is like, if you've ever seen the Harry Potter movies, British schools divide an, in, a school internally into four different houses. They're just completely randomly assigned whatever the little talking hat spits out. You know, that's where you end up going. And um, 
And so that means that everything in that school is continually in competition with each other because of the intra, intra house competitions on everything, grades, you know, f uh, physical activities, all of this stuff. Um, but the main thing I think, Scott, that needs to be said about this was, was that if you had to wear a tie every day and you had to, and you had to wear a, a jacket and a tie every day and go to school and your shoes had to be shined, and when the teacher walked into the classroom, you had to stand up and you had to stay on your feet until the teacher sat down and then you still had to stand up until he said, you may be seated, that fundamental respect provided a discipline matrix that allowed you to learn things. And... And now we're in an age where, where school teachers are being told to go F themselves by kindergartners. And this is not an exaggeration. The school teachers are having items thrown at them just round the clock. They're just being beaten unconscious. And the worst that can happen to them is they take the student in for a timeout. Or maybe they'll try to, dis to, to sit with this disruptive student and try to explain to him that he's making it more difficult for other kids to learn as if he doesn't know what the hell he's doing, right? So... So yes, this system is a spectacularly successful system. And I was going to say, and I, I, I thought about this while Steve was talking, I was going to say that this, that this boys' school, girls' school thing comes with one downside, and that the downside was that when I first went to my first boy-girl party, like after-school social party, I was probably 13, and I was petrified, man. I mean, I was terrified. And I said, that's the downside. And, and now that I look back on it, I actually am not even so sure that that was a downside. I think on some level, it was probably good that these two species didn't really know too much about each other until we got to be at that age. We did that thing where you pass the apple, you know, under your chin, you know, that, that little game, you know, that, that, that kind of thing. You know what I'm talking about? You put an apple under your chin, then some girl comes along, takes the apple, and you, it's like, and it's like, you know, what the, what the actual hell is going on? You're here? necking. Like, where's my, where's my, where's my escape vehicle? But I liked it, you know, and, and, and all of this stuff goes counter to the, to the, it's not even the, it's not even the failure of discipline or, or, or anything. It, it's the simple loss of structure. Structure is dissolving. And you can't learn anything without structure. You can't learn without discipline. You can't learn without respect. You can't learn without quiet. You can't learn without without uh, any of these things. And as you mentioned, it was, you know, an all boys school. So we had woodwork and metalwork. And it was in metalwork when I realized that you could st you could have a piece of uh, pig iron that you've just bent into a shape and it did not have to be glowing red still in order for it still to be very, 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 very hot, which uh, I learned by uh, picking up one of those. And uh, that was another lesson that, that uh, has stayed with me for the rest of my life. You know, when you think of your childhood, or at least when I think of mine, um, we were playing sports almost all the time. Uh, you know, in the summer it was baseball, in the fall it was football, in the winter it was basketball, and then baseball starts up again kind of in the spring with some wrestling in between there. I forget when that happened. Um, but uh, if you've ever coached kids, you know that you have to keep boys active. And so when I used to draft the outline for a coaching session for my basketball team of these young boys, I knew that I had to change the activity every few minutes. I had to keep them focused. I had to basically kind of stay on top of the wave of male energy <laughs> or it would just completely subsume me if I if I didn't know what was going on. And if I was disorganized, uh, it would devolve into chaos. But because I did that and because I prepared that way, the way a teacher at an all-boys school would have to, um, it was a very successful experience, and the boys loved the discipline. They loved the schedule. They loved, loved, loved being it. led. They loved being challenged. They loved being praised. They, they loved the competition of all of this. And, you know, back in our society today, it's become very unpopular to suggest that something could be separate and still equal, basically because of the stain of racism from the past where they, you know, said that they had separate but equal schools, but they never were equal. Uh, but you don't separate people on the basis of race because black boys and white boys are boys. 
So there's no reason to separate them from each other. However, there's good solid brain research reasons to separate out boys and girls for most of their learning experiences. I'm not saying they can't do anything together, but I'm saying it's going to be beneficial if these schools begin to pay attention to brain science and to the science of the differences between the sexes to help them better educate these kids. Um, I can remember a superintendent telling me that they were having a huge dropout rate among Latino students in the city where he was the superintendent. And I said, well, you just think that these kids can't learn? And he said, no, they're dropping out so that they can work. They're boys. They're dropping out so that they can work to support their families. And I said, well, it seems to me there should be some way to keep educating them, to keep them in the pipeline for that, and also let them work to support their families. And he thought that that was also the case. But I was just so encouraged to read this story that there are at least some schools that realize that boys and girls are going to learn differently and that if we address their needs and and come to them where they are, we can make a big difference in their lives. Um, this is something that you can start talking to your local school district about. You can find ways to say, okay, how are there, how, what does the brain science say about how boys learn and how can we incorporate that into the existing paradigm? Or honestly, you can pull your kid out of the public school that he's in now and put him into a more, a, a situation that's more tailored for the kind of uh, the kind of thinking that he does. If you don't do something like this and you say, no, I'm sorry, son, you got to sit still with the little girls for six or eight hours a day and listen to another per, uh, female uh, drone on for hours while you sit there and try to act polite, you will lose them to the video games where they get together and they have headsets on and they're talking to their friends about heroic behaviors and activities and things that are exciting to do. Give your boys exciting things to do that will help them learn and they will learn. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making Right Angle possible.